The sim room just got a huge upgrade. I just built a custom gaming desktop to run in my setup. The end result came out better than I expected and I'm so glad I did it. If you've been following the channel, you'll know that I've been running a gaming laptop in my build for the last three years. It's done a great job and I really like the small footprint and the ease of portability that it offers. But I recently upgraded my 1080p projector to the BenQ LK936ST 4K projector. And while the laptop was keeping up, it was definitely struggling on higher demand courses on softwares like GS Pro, and especially having a hard time on FSX Play software when running 4K graphics. Now, truth be told, I'm no computer expert. To be honest with you, a few weeks ago, I didn't even know what a BIOS was, but I spent countless hours of research because I wanted to ensure that my computer was keeping up with my components. I mean, what's the point of having a 4K projector and a premium screen if you don't have the horsepower to keep up with it? I recorded the entire process from start to finish from a novice's perspective to show you you can absolutely do this. The whole build was actually extremely enjoyable and I kind of want to build another one. So follow me along in this process as I show you how to build this 4K gaming monster that can handle any golf simulation software you throw at it. Doing it this way too will save you a ton of money as a similar spec build would cost significantly more. Links to everything in this build will be listed in the descriptions down below as well as some budget friendly options as truth be told, I went a little bit overboard on some of the components but when I saw them, I just had to have them. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, comment them down below and any additional questions you have, reach out to us at pixelgolfco.com and we offer free consultation. Also, if you're just getting started in your golf simulator journey, make sure to check out this video to learn how to build a custom golf simulator to fit your space and your budget. So without rambling on too much, let's get started with the video and thank you for watching. First and foremost, we want to gather all the parts we need for the build. I have links to everything down below in the description as well as some budget friendly options. Pricing is pretty universal for computer parts, so I chose to stick with Amazon as they have an easy return policy and fast shipping. You're going to want to start by grabbing your motherboard and removing the heatsink cover from the plate. This is where you're going to install your SSD storage. Just unscrew the two screws, set that to the side and remove the blue plastic protective film. Grab your new M.2 SSD storage remove it from the package and slide it into place and using one finger hold it down while you lock it in with the plastic tab and then remove the other blue cover and screw that heat sink back over the top of the SSD. Now we can install our CPU on the motherboard. Go ahead and push down on the lever and open up the CPU compartment. Grab your brand new CPU and carefully line it up with the motherboard. One thing to notate is there's a triangle on your CPU socket cover. You'll also see a triangle on your actual CPU. This is to make sure it's orientated correctly in the CPU socket. So make sure you're putting it in that same exact spot. And then we can go ahead and just push down the plate and you'll see that black plastic piece will just pop out. Just go ahead and discard that. You no longer need it and lock it into place. Now with that black plastic piece out of the way, just verify that those triangles on your CPU and CPU socket are in the exact same orientation. Now grab your RAM sticks and remove them from the packaging. You're going to want to open up these two slots, slots two and four, and remove any protective film on the RAM sticks and take the first card in this orientation, snap it into place, and then repeat the process for the second card. That'll go in slot four and your motherboard is now all ready to go. Now we can start preparing the case. Go ahead and remove the front glass panel, remove the top panel, and then flip the case around and remove the rear panel as well and remove the box that contains the hardware that we'll be using throughout the build. Now you want to remove the rear case fan. This will make it easier and give you a lot more room for the other processes throughout the build. It's just four screws, just unscrew it and remove it from the case. Now we can get our front panel cables out of the way so we can get access to the lower fan. You can actually leave this lower fan into place, but I'm upgrading it to a bigger 140 millimeter size fan. So if you're gonna do the same thing that I'm doing here, go ahead and remove the dust panel cover on the bottom of the case and unscrew the four screws so you can free that lower fan from the bottom of the case. And just tuck the front panel cables back under the case so they're out of the way. Now we want to remove the GPU adapter from the case. Just remove the retaining screw and then pull the GPU adapter aside and make sure to put that retaining screw back into place so you don't lose it later in the build. Now just grab a twist tie and secure the GPU adapter to the case so it's not flopping around and can potentially get damaged. Now go ahead and grab your motherboard, remove the protective decal from the back, slide it into place. You want to make sure it lines up with the back slot and everything is where it's supposed to be and then grab your screws and your hardware box from your case and it's going to be these motherboard screws here. There should be 
be nine of them, three on the top, three in the middle, and three on the bottom. Keep in mind there will be some extra screws left over, but for this build and this motherboard, there's only nine screws that secure it to the case. Now that the motherboard is safely secured into place, go ahead and remove the protective decals on the front of the motherboard. I removed all of them except for the big one in the top left corner. Now we can grab our front panel cables and start hooking those up to the motherboard. You can start with the one marked F panel, feed it through this slot in the bottom of the case, and then hook it to the panel header in this orientation. Now grab the connector marked HD audio and feed it through this slot on the bottom and hook it up to the F audio connector on the bottom of the motherboard. Now that those two connectors are in place, we can move on to the front USB panel connectors. They go on these two slots here on the motherboard. We can start with the USB-C connector, just remove the protective cover and feed it through the case, and you want to hook that into this slot on the motherboard. Now we can grab our standard USB connector and feed it through the same slot on the case and you want to hook it into the slot just below the USB-C. Now that the front panel cables are all connected, go ahead and just temporarily secure those to the case so they're out of the way. Now we can install the bracket for our AIO cooler. This is going to be located inside of your cooler's box. You'll notice two mounting locations on your motherboard. You're going to want to line those up with the outermost mounting hole. Remove the adhesive paper and then line it up on the back of the motherboard and just make sure you're lining it up with those outer holes and press into place. Now just verify from the front side that those are lined up with the outer hole location. Now grab the mounting post from your AIO's hardware kit and you're going to want to use the ones marked Intel 1700. Go ahead and thread those four mounting posts in by hand and then you can use a nut driver to just snug them into place. You don't need a lot of force for this. Now grab your power supply unit and we're going to get this all pre-wired before we install it in the case. Start by grabbing the 24 pin connector from the box. You'll see it has two connectors on the end of it and you're going to want to put those two connectors in these slots here marked motherboard on the back of the power supply unit. Now you'll want to grab two of the cables that are marked BE49. There's going to be three in the packaging but you only need two of them for this. Each of those cables will have two connectors on the end of them marked PCIe. You're going to want to grab your GPU case and grab this black adapter and you're going to hook that up to three of those. It doesn't matter, you won't use one of them, but just hook it up to three that are supplied by the ends. Now take those two ends marked BE49 and you're going to plug them into these two slots marked CPU on the power supply unit. The reason we pre-connected the black GPU adapter is because it just makes it easier in the end to install it up through the case. Now we can grab two of these CPU power connectors, they're marked BE50. These are going to feed up to the top of the motherboard. They have two connectors on the end that goes to the motherboard. They just butt together and plug in that you'll see later. Just grab the ends marked BE50 and plug those into these two slots. It doesn't matter which one goes into which. They're basically identical cables. Now we want to hook up our SATA power cable. Just grab the one marked NB108 and you can plug it into any one of these slots on this portion of the PSU. I'm just going to plug it into this one and you're all set with the pre-wiring. It may look like a lot going on but basically these are four runs of wires. This one's going to go to your ATX power on your motherboard. You're going to have this one that feeds up to your GPU. This run's going to be for your CPU power on the top of your motherboard. Those are those two connectors that are going to butt together. And this is a SATA power that's going to control the hub for our AIO and my fans that I'm going to be adding. I also zip tied each of these four runs to make cable management a little bit easier. Go ahead and position your PSU into your case with the fan pointed down and you can use the four bolts that come with your PSU to secure it to the back of the case. Now we can take our 24 pin PSU cable, feed it through this portion of the case and hook it up to the ATX power slot on the motherboard. Now we can take our CPU power connectors and we're gonna hook them up to these two portions of the motherboard. Just go ahead and feed those in through the back and out the top and then we can go ahead and just plug those in. They only go in one way, so just make sure that the shapes line up and that everything fits into place. But you'll see how they just butt against each other and then they connect in. Now we can install the GPU adapter on the motherboard. Move the plastic protective cover over the fins and then just line it up with the case. So you might have to move one of these little tabs over. Just make sure that it's lined up and then slide it right into the motherboard. It'll click into place. And if you have any issues, you can hit this quick release button to pull it out if you ever need to. Now just secure it down with the screw. Now we can start installing our all-in-one cooler for our CPU. I decided to not use the fans that come with the cooler. I wanted to add my own custom touch to it, so I'm gonna use some different fans. The first thing you wanna do is remove this LCD display on there. You just don't wanna risk scratching it. It's just held on there by a magnet and just unclips. Just set that to the side and move the CPU cooler out of the way so we can install the fans. So I decided to go with these Lee and Lee fans instead of the ones that come with the kit. There's nothing wrong with the fans that come with the kit. I just really like the look of these. You're gonna to wanna to buy the three if you decide to go this route as well as they'll come with the controller needed. One cool feature with these fans is they don't need a lot of cables as each fan doesn't need a cable. They kind of just daisy chain together. So you just kind of line them up and you can just put them into place and they slide and lock together. And that makes cable management way easier as you only need one cable to power this run of fans. 
If you ended up going this route, just make sure that you remove all the protective plastic pieces that are on the front and the back side of the fans. Before you install the fans to the radiator, notate where the power connector is on the fans. I'm going to put that power connector to the left side as this offers a better position to run the power cable. Make sure to install the fans in this orientation with the centerpiece logo pointing up. Now grab the screws that came with your cooler and you're going to want to use the long screws to secure the fans to the radiator. Just go ahead and feed them in and tighten them down carefully and make sure not to cross thread anything you want to use all the screws and just tighten down with a Phillips screwdriver. Now grab the power connectors that came with your Lee and Lee kit. You're only going to need one of them since we daisy chained the fans together. You're going to want to grab the white end and insert that into the connector in this orientation. The good thing about these fans is this cable is flexible so you can bend it from right to left depending on how you have to run your cable in your case. Now feed that power connector cable through the top and then position your radiator into place in the top of the case. Now while holding the radiator into place, grab two of the short screws that came with your AIO cooler and secure the radiator to the top of the case. Now that the radiator is secure with those two screws, you're going to want to slide it all the way to the right. This will give room for the rear case fan that we're going to be installing later. Then take the remaining short screws and washers and go around securing the radiator to the top of the case with all mounting locations. Then you can grab these four bolts from your AIO kit and you want to remove the plastic piece that's covering the CPU cooler. You'll see it already has thermal grease pre-applied to it. Go ahead and just take those four bolts and tighten down by hand on all four corners for the CPU cooler. You want to position it into place so it is level and then you can take a Phillips screwdriver and just snug it into place. It should be nice and level if you did it right. Now we can install the rear case fan. Again, I went with the Lee and Lee 120 fan. You're just going to want to connect the power cable, feed it out the back of the case and then get the fan in position. It is going to be a tight fit, but it will fit into the case. Just make sure the holes line up in the back and then use the four supplied screws to mount it to the case. For the side case fans, I'm using using two Lee and Lee 140 fans. Again, just like the step before, daisy chain them together, connect the white power cable to there. And these ones I'm gonna set up for intake. So these are actually gonna pull air in. You'll notice that the Lee and Lee emblem is facing on the backside. That means that these are set up to intake air, not exhaust it. Go ahead and just put those in position, slide it down to the bottom and use all the supplied screws to mount it into place. Now we're going to install the final fan in this build. Again, I'm using a Lee and Lee 140 set to intake. So you want to put it in in this orientation. Make sure to hook up the power connector. And then once you have it in place, go ahead and flip the case on its back and secure it with the four supplied screws and then just replace the dust cover on the bottom. Now just take those four wires from those four runs of fans and just temporarily tie them together. Then you want to go ahead and do some cable management. You want to make sure that lower fan is clear of any cables in its way. There's anchor points all throughout the case so you can get everything nice and tidy. Just take your time and do the best you can. Most of it will be covered up anyway. You can see I have my Lee and Lee fans and the SATA cable just pulled to the side as we still need to get those connected. Now going back to the front of the case, you can see I already have my GPU cable ran through the bottom of the case and now we we can install our LCD display on the CPU cooler. Go ahead and just take the wires coming off of it and feed them out through the top of the case and attach to the case with its magnetic connection and remove the protective cover. And take the last connector and feed that in through the top as well. Now we're going to take that single wire connector and we're going to hook it up to the CPU fan on the header. Just remove the cover on the CPU fan header and then go ahead and connect it to the motherboard. Now grab our USB splitter that came with our AIO kit and you're going to want to hook that USB connector up to the USB header on the bottom of the motherboard and feed those other two USB connectors through the bottom and out the back. Now take the long cable coming off the LCD display and feed that in through the back of the case. Now grab the connector hub from your AIO kit and you're going to want to take that USB cable coming off of that long cable we just fed through and the connector marked USB, plug it into one of the two USB ports on the splitter we installed. Now you want to grab the AIO connector hub and grab the USB connector coming out of the bottom and you want to hook that into the other USB connector on the splitter we installed. Now take the connector coming off of the AIO display and hook that into the hub as well. You'll see a white mark notating the orientation it goes in. Now we just have to hook the SATA connector on the hub up to one of the SATA connectors coming from the power supply unit we installed earlier. If you decided to just use the fans that came with the cooler, you would just hook them up here on the side of the hub. One side's for RGB and the other side is for the fan speed. I went with the Lee and Lee fan, so I'll be using the Lee and Lee hub to control those. If you went this route as well, you're going to want to grab the USB connector from the Lee and Lee hub and you want to hook that up to the USB header on the motherboard. You can see we already have the one hooked up for the Corsair, so just put it in the USB port next to it and feed the cable out the back. Now we can grab our Lee and Lee hub and remove the plastic protective
extract the film from it and we can grab that USB we just fed through and hook it into the bottom of the controller. Now grab the four cables from the four fan runs and hook those into any slot on the side of the Lee and Lee fan hub. Then grab the two SATA connectors on the bottom of the Lee and Lee hub and hook those into the SATA connectors coming from the power supply unit. Now take both hubs and mount them to the back of the case with the provided sticky tape. And you're basically all set from there. Just go around and make sure all your cables are managed and everything is clean. The lower fan isn't being blocked by any cables and just get everything anchored to the back and make sure nothing got disconnected in the process. Now we just have to install the GPU. Go ahead and pull off the two protective cover pieces from the GPU connector and you want to unscrew the two screws on the case and grab your GPU and take the protective cover off of the bottom and then simply position it into place over the adapter and it should just snap down right into place in which case you can replace those two screws to secure it in place. Now grab the GPU connector we already pre-fed, hook it up to the top of the GPU and then you can remove the protective plastic cover. Basically from here, you're just gonna wanna connect your PSU with the supplied power cable and then hook an HDMI cable up to the GPU and to a monitor and go ahead and flip the power supply unit on in the back and then press the front panel button. Make sure your computer starts up, all your fans are running, everything looks as it should. And as long as you're connected to a monitor, you should be presented with this screen that shows your installed CPU, your motherboard, your RAM, and your storage. So just make sure all that is showing up. Now that we've ensured everything is running correctly, we can go ahead and put our back cover back on our case, our top cover, and the tempered glass front cover. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the plastic on until I get it in its final resting place. And there you have it. Thank you guys so much for watching. The whole build was extremely enjoyable. Honestly, it was like Legos times 10. I really enjoyed the whole process. Make sure to subscribe as part two is coming out, showing you the setup process, how to install Windows, and any other programs that you need. I'll also include some tips on how to optimize for golf simulators. Thanks again, guys. We'll see you on the next one.